Welcome in to the best in paranormal podcasting. This is Darkness Radio. I am Tim Dennis. We have a big, big show in store for you kids. Let's get it going, shall we? Uh, I am honored today uh, to have uh, four very, very good, par- more than very, very good, great paranormal investigators with me who have a show on the uh, Travel Channel and Discovery Plus that is coming uh, to your streaming service and your televisions on November 25th. It is their uh, fourth season, I believe. Uh, coming to uh, November 25th. I got the pleasure over the weekend of seeing uh, the first two episodes out of eight that are coming on the 25th. And uh, you know what? Let's just bring them on board and we'll, uh, you know them as Dakota, Chelsea, Tanner, and Alex. Uh, They're the crew from Destination Fear. Gang, how you doing? Hey, hey. Hey, 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 Blaine, doing well. Thanks for having us on. Thank you for being on. I don't have a good intro when I want to just get into it and talk about uh, the season. Now, let's start with the end of last season. The end of last season, you were in Ireland and and you were in Europe. And it was was pretty much uh, a journey that shook you guys up a little bit. I want to talk about the end of Ireland and and, and get into what we're doing uh, this season, because you have an interesting concept. And let me start with you, Dakota. Uh, give me your, your impressions of Ireland and how it changed you. Yeah, I mean, I think Ireland changed all of us. Just going to a country with so much rich history. And I just felt like everything we've experienced in the U.S. was just peanuts. It was nothing compared to the energies, the vibe, just what the, the darkness at some of the locations we visited in Ireland. And I think after Ireland, we all kind of, we all were like, we, we can't go back to America. Like we got to stay here. We had to explore Europe. And I know we all wanted to actually do that. Uh, but then, you know, COVID, another wave of COVID happened and we had to stay in the States, but, uh, it, it changed us. It was definitely an eye opening moment. And, I think if we are given the opportunity to go to any part of Europe again, we are definitely going to, we're going to have a lot uh, to prepare for because Ireland was an undertaking. Uh, Chelsea, how did, how did uh, Europe affect you? Is it, uh, is it a different paranormal experience in over here in the States? It's on a very similar wavelength as Dakota and similar page. Um, one thing that's just so different whenever you go into a building, regardless of where it is, you always think of like who used to be here. And in America, you have maybe a hundred years of people who were in these buildings. But in Europe, we are talking about sometimes like thousands of years. We are talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and I think just that alone um, amplifies the experience because you don't really know what era you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of these buildings we went to, um, especially Spike Island, you know, had many layers to its history. And I think that that was one of the things that totally was new for us um, as a group, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex, is there a spirit that sticks out to you that, that you ran across in, in uh, Europe that, that, uh, stuck out to you i mean there's not any one particular for me i know tanner feels completely different about uh this topic okay but for me it was uh the tunnels i'm notorious for drawing tunnels in our sleeping arrangements and for some reason it just seemed darker and more dangerous in the tunnels in spike island and of course i drew that and had to stay the night but um yeah, I completely agree with Dakota and Chelsea, though. It's it's the rich history. You don't know exactly what time period you're even dealing with when it comes to the spirits. So it's just a lot more dense than here in the States. Well, Alex, let me ask you this. Why is it that you draw the tunnels? <laughs> I have the worst fingers ever. Everyone knows that. I just I can't draw good cards and I can't. I just, I don't don't know. It's fate. It's really just fate for me. I'm in the tunnel every (laughs) single time. Do you you Uh, consider yourself a magnet for, for spirits, Alex? It kind of, it kind of seems that way now. I would say like, I've never really thought of it that way, but that's a good way to put it. I I feel like I am a little bit of a magnet. Okay. A magnet for tunnels. Magnet for tunnels. tunnels. Yeah. Anything Uh, underground. uh, There you go. I think, I think Tanner secretly squishes the uh the drawing cards a little <laughs> bit tighter so yeah. that he knows which one's not to grab okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's exactly it. Is that the is that the case, Tanner? Are you are you rigging the card so that uh, Alex gets uh, it gets a tunnel every time? He one in my hand, and I just you know put my hand and <laughs> that out. Every time they go, like, you can't do that. So that never made the cut, actually. But yeah, <laughs> no, it's all luck of the cut, all up to fate. And for some reason, fate just loves Alex in the tunnels. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tanner, give me your impression of, of Europe and, and the spirits there. I, it, it, I know you didn't have a very uh, good time with them there, buddy. Uh, tell me a little bit about one of the ones that really stuck out for you. Well, definitely Loftus Hall. I mean, that one was the first time like anyone has been shoved into a one room of this location just the entire night and like just the story alone i mean like we're dealing not just with history this time but with legends and a lot of the legends had to deal with the actual devil himself and something that was mimicking the devil and evil spirits and darkness and like not to like say what everyone else is saying but like the history there goes so deep that you truly don't know what you're messing with like most of the time you go into these places you can pinpoint a story because there's only one story that's been had there Mm -hmm. and with europe you walk into this place and you don't know what century that story or this occurrence could be coming from and now we're going in me being put into a room where a person was pretty much tormented by the devil being locked by herself. And like, you could just automatically feel the energy and feel everything that's happening on in that room as if it was happening to you. And I don't have fun. (laughs) Is is the energy heavier than here? Does it feel heavier? I would say so. And I think literally just because like everyone was saying is it's layered. I mean, it's like, there's a compression to all the energy there because all of the, all of that history is being condensed into those small rooms. So it's, I would say, yeah, it is thicker. It's a little darker and something else is happening there because there's more opportunity because of this long history for more stuff to happen there. Let yeah, me- I mean, even like Spike Island as an example, like it was a the prison, then it was a military fort. And then, we didn't even touch on this in the episode, but before the military occupied Spike Island and like many, many, many years ago, it was occupied by the Vikings. And oh. like, there was just so much history. It's hard, It's really hard to, to even wrap your head around. Well, if it was occupied by the Minnesota Vikings, it would have choked it in <laughs> up and, and it would have been easy. It would have been a cakewalk. Uh, that's just, it also really would have made Tanner cry. Yeah. It, well, yeah. See, it, that's a joke for us Minnesotans. So, uh, it, you know, we, we can, we can throw that out there. Um, uh, let me, let me ask you this. Now there's, there's something really interesting here in this dynamic when we watch the show and that of course it, it's right there in the title and in, in destination fear. Um, and I want to throw this first to, to Dakota uh, because of the unique dynamic in this season of the show. And, and Dakota, I want to ask you this. It's, it's obvious that, or, or maybe it's not, that, that fear is quite the magnet for drawing these spirits out. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think there's a lot of methods you could use, but fear is, for us, it's a proven like tactic. It's just, it always works. If, you, if you're vulnerable, if you're, emitting fear that radiates and whatever's there picks up on it. And I just feel like it, it causes a bigger reaction. I don't want to pick on Tanner, but I'm going to, in this case, um, Tanner, do you feel like with having that fear, it opens you up and makes you more vulnerable to be picked on more or even potentially bring home an attachment? I definitely think that that is, a possibility and that's something that can happen. I mean, we all believe that, you know, if you show fear, it is going to feed off that. It's going to react to that. I mean, you got to think about a spirit on their side. If they do something and it causes a reaction, they're going to keep on doing that because that's one way to communicate and one way to speak. And most, and then sometimes you get into a maleficent spirit and they want to do more than that. So I do believe it's like when you show a reaction, especially one that's so energetic, that's fear, like there's a bigger possibility for that to happen. It's a, you know, them picking on you or something attaching yourself to you. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> 
I'm. Uh, I, I asked this question. Chelsea wasn't with us the last time we had uh, we had Dakota and Tanner on. I I wondered uh, if Dakota had felt bad about putting Chelsea in the situations that that uh, he did, and I know he does. Chelsea, do you ever hold any animosity towards Dakota for him putting you sometimes in some of the situations that he put you in? Uh, I'm oh. curious. Yeah, no, that's a really good question. And it's actually something that I hear like 365 days a year. And um, it seems to be a really common trend, which I actually appreciate because I feel the support there. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But to be honest, we all put each other through things. And um, I know we say it all the time that we didn't sign up for this, but we definitely all signed up for this. Okay. And... um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and so to say it's safe um i think in the moment i'm always like are you kidding me like this is outrageous but um once time settles like I, i'm i'm almost glad that we do challenge each other because it makes makes for such better content honestly mm-hmm. <laughs> because correct me if i'm wrong here dakota there is a little bit of a sadistic element to the show to whoever's <laughs> yeah, picking, yeah. whoever's picking the location or whoever's doling out the i don't want to call it punishment because it's not punishment you like you said you guys are all in it together but whoever's picking the assignment for whomever uh you are kind of dealing out the raw end of the deal to who to whomever mm-hmm. and and correct me if i'm wrong I mean, Dakota, it's kind of, right i mean it, when, when, you're right no it's a vicious cycle because it started with season one with me picking the locations and yeah. that was like i got it all out I, I i pissed everyone off and then all of a sudden mm-hmm. the second season we're like all right everyone's gonna pick this time and didn't like put it together that like oh wait if they get like one choice like it's going to be brutal. Like it's not going to be, there's no, there's going to be no off time. There's going to be no easiness. Like, so that's kind of what's happened now is like every season, it's just inevitable that someone's going to do something early on. And then by the midpoint of the end of the season, that person who was the victim has now turned the table and it's, it's just, it's a vicious cycle. And I don't think we always say like, well, you did this to me. So that's why I'm doing this to you. But like at this point I was able to track it for a long time. Like, are we even? And like, it was even for a while. Mm-hmm. Now at this point, it's too chaotic. It's like, I don't know if we're even even anymore. I don't know who, like, it's just too, we picked on each other too much. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's one of those dynamics where you, you look at it and it's, it's funny. It's kind of, it's, it's half ribbing. It's half, it, it's half lovingly ribbing and there's too many halves here. Um, but there's, there's also the, you know, we're all in it together. So we might as all, uh, you might as well all take our medicine, you know, we're, we're mm-hmm. all, you know, but in the, in the, in the spirit of it, we're also in it to, to see what exactly these, these spirits do. So it's not really punishment, but at the same time, there's a, there's kind of a sadistic masochistic thing going on here where we're all, kind of taking our, our, our medicine as well. I mean, um, yeah. I had to ask that about, uh, uh, I guess be, uh, about Chelsea, because, you know, with, with my own siblings, I would say, um, I guess I, I would tend to want to pick on one sister over another and <laughs> there would be a little, uh, I guess, subconscious, you know, oh, I'm going to put her in this situation once in a while, just to kind of, get her go do you ever feel like there's times where the two of you might be squabbling a little bit where you might want to put her in a situation where she's not necessarily going to get hurt but it might just kind of scare her a little bit more than others oh my gosh yeah i mean growing <laughs> up like me tanner alex chelsea we used to always urban explore and like this was definitely something we enjoyed doing was was going to haunted buildings exploring them and then for the next two weeks talk about it and then just and rehash the fear and so like that's definitely where this all started from is like, we're not just going to go to this building and just explore it anymore. Like we're always trying to innovate and come up with ways to really push ourselves. But when it comes to me and Chelsea, I mean, there's even this first episode, it's a little bit of a spoiler, but like right away I drop her off and I bring her blindfolded to the tunnel (laughs) at the start (laughs) of the season. I'm like, I knew what I was getting though. I'm like, this is going to, it's going to be an interesting season if this is how I'm starting. I think to be honest, though, like the irony of like all of this is, is quite humorous. Like growing up, I was always the sibling who was like hiding in closets, jumping out, scaring my siblings. Like the like every phase of my life, I've always been the sibling that scares everyone else. And so this might 
into this deep down be something that actually is full circle for you, Dakota? <laughs> it kind of is. I mean, it's not a lie. I think Tanner and Alex can attest to that too. You've always been the person that just will be walking in the house and just out of a cupboard. Bah! <laughs> yeah. And then she laughs and it's like, and then she does that laugh and yeah, but you know, laugh. role reversal, you jump out at her and why would you do that? <laughs> why would you do that? <laughs> So, so Tanner and Alex, do you do you kind of sit back and smile and think, "Oh, this is payback"? Then I, oh. I like watching the payback on both sides. I don't I don't want to pick <laughs> one side or the other. I like when Dakota gets tortured. I like when Chelsea gets tortured. I like when Tanner does, and I hate when I get tortured. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when uh, Chelsea and Dakota start going back, Dakota. Other, I just sit back with popcorn and go, "Like they're not talking about me, so I'm happy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we'll just let them hash this out. I think Dakota's frozen. <laughs> Dakota's frozen. <laughs> yeah, Dakota's face right now. Screenshot that because that is great. There we go. Oh, oh, there there is. Is. oh okay. Dang so it. he was actually frozen. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And, and now everyone was like, we're in the middle of a joke, and then I said something, and everyone went silent. I was like, okay, sorry. Huh? I, I guess know. that wasn't funny. We just thought <laughs> you were. We just thought you were speechless. <laughs> Dude, you should have seen your face, how the frame it froze on. <laughs> I can't wait to rewatch this. <laughs> yeah, you're going to love it. <laughs> nice. Great. <laughs> so, uh, now, there are those moments, though, in, in, in the show, and, and the moments that I find, uh, I guess, even more fascinating than when you're <laughs> you're ribbing each other, and that is when you get to a point where it's just too much when you get to these uh, locations where it's become overwhelming and the, the times where you do come together and you're supportive of each, of each other. Um, talk to me a little bit now with the, the different locations that you've been to that have been a little overwhelming um, about the closeness that, that you guys have, have come together. It's, it's become more than just a team, hasn't it? And let me, let me ask Alex first. Um, Talk to me a little bit about how you can depend on the different members of the team when you're having a tough time. I think the best example for that is uh, when we went to Hillview Manor season two and I had to tap out uh, towards the end of the night. I mean, that was something I don't think I could have even gone into that building without every single one of them. Uh, I don't know what it was that affected me that night, but I got very sick inside the building and, I, if everyone saw it, I threw up uh, when I was doing my solo and I had to leave and actually go to the hospital. But um, without them and like being supportive of like me in that situation, I it would have been a lot worse. I think I, I think that would have scarred me for a lot longer than it did. But in general, when we go into these buildings, like everyone knows Tanner is willing to be the person to step out in front if if we think we're in danger, Tanner is the guy that's going to step up and just put himself in harm's way to protect everyone else. And that something that I think we all can agree on. Chelsea is definitely the more analytical person where she will put a grinding halt to Dakota's stupid ideas sometimes where she goes, this is just not smart, Dakota. Like you need <laughs> to actually think about this for a second. This is not smart. And, you know, Dakota, he does know when to win enough is enough. He's, he's not, he's not a, he's not a psychopath like that, where he just wants to put his friends into that much danger. And so, you know, we all kind of have this yin and yang kind of thing going on and mm -hmm. we all play a part that I think uh, makes the group what it is. You know, I, I, I one of the things you know I, I want to ask Chelsea real quick here. It, it's interesting you say Chelsea's the the analytical part of the group. Um, earlier this year, uh, you released the, um, the the movie uh, Dakota on, mm -hmm. on on Discovery Plus. Um, yeah, Trail to Terror. Trail, yeah, um, and uh, it was very interesting because it was the very beginning of this thing and. It, I've noticed the growth, particularly of, of Chelsea, from then to now, and it, it's it's uh, it's it's quite an interesting journey. Chelsea, tell me in your words how you feel you've grown since that movie to now, because we haven't had you on to talk about that experience uh, to now sure. to this season. So tell me how you feel you've grown since then. 
Sure. So I can say I was probably the one of the least experienced as far as going to these locations and spending the night. The documentary Trail of Terror was actually the first time that I had ever attempted to stay overnight at a location. And, um, you know, before in our childhood, we used to go together as groups. Like we would go, we'd visit these scary places. Um, we'd leave together. It was all a team effort from start to finish. Um, so the Trail of Terror was the first time where I really experienced the paranormal as an individual and by myself. And it was really um, scary territory. Um, and it was also a really big challenge for me personally. And it was something that I actually didn't think I could do. And I didn't want to do at the time. I was I was so scared by the end of that shoot that I, if someone were to tell me, you know, you'll have a TV show someday on this. Um, do you think you could do it? Mm -hmm. And my honest answer would have probably been, I probably can't. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the growth came from doing things with people that I trust that um, I know I can do. And although I still get incredibly scared at these locations even today i know that at the end of the day um i've done it before mm -hmm. and there is growth in experience and i think that um it's a it's really interesting to see that uh, even as myself because rewind like i said 10 years ago seven years ago I never, ever would think I'd be doing this today. Do you believe that fear is a healthy thing? Like if you lose that fear when you go to a haunted location that maybe you become too jaded and something bad could happen going to one I of think, these locations? I mean, I think fear is something that, of course, like you don't want to live in fear, mm -hmm. um, but fear allows you to, to reach new heights. And if you walked around doing things that you're comfortable with every single day of your life and you never reached outside those comfort zones of life, even take paranormal out of it, you would never get to see that growth in, in your yourself as a person. Um, so I think fear is needed. I don't think you should live in fear, but I think it's needed to really expand who you are. I also think you have a point of like, if you're walking around not having any fear at all, um, there's consequences to that, especially for things that are scary. Yeah. So absolutely. Very good. Very good. Uh, at this point, folks, let's take our break. When we come back, I want to tell you about the concept that Dakota's come up with for this season, which is very interesting indeed. Uh, literally, we're going deeper and darker this season. Uh, and I want to talk to the cast about how it's going to affect them this year and, uh, and whether it's going to bring up deeper and darker things on the show. We'll do that when we come back. We're with the cast of Destination Fear. Uh, we've got the entire cast. We've got Chelsea, Alex, uh, Tanner, and Dakota. And when we come back, we'll be talking about whether deeper and darker means stranger and more malevolent. Does deeper and darker mean stranger and more malevolent? That's next on the Best in Paranormal Podcasting. This is Darkness Radio. Welcome back to the Best in Paranormal Podcasting. This is Darkness Radio. I'm Tim Dennis. We're with the cast of Destination Fear, which starts up again here on Friday, November 25th on Destiny, uh, on uh, Discovery Plus and Travel Channel. Uh, you can stream it uh, same day that you can see it on Travel Channel. Uh, and uh, it, it is on uh, 9 p.m. Eastern and uh you could, and Pacific, check your local listings if you're watching it on Travel Channel. Again, you can stream it same day on Discovery+. Plus. Um, guys, we mentioned that there's a new concept for this season, and I got to screen the first two episodes, uh, which are at uh, Crescent Sanatorium, which I got to tell you guys, I was blown away by the first two episodes. I don't say that lightly. I don't, I don't use those words lightly when I, when I watch a, a paranormal TV show. In fact, I'll tell you, I, I tend to think most paranormal TV shows are standard fare, and I, I tend to be just kind of blasé when I watch most TV shows. I really, really enjoyed the first two episodes. So, wow. Uh, Crescent, Thank you. Uh, absolutely. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, 
the, the concept here, Dakota, and I want you to put it in your own words, because when the way you put it in the beginning of the episode is absolutely chilling. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and, and tell us what the concept of the season is. Yeah, well, I mean, if you go back to Ireland, at Spike Island, we implemented candles that night where instead of flashlights, instead of any uh, all the technology we usually have, like you only get a candle. So you have a, a couple feet of light and that's about it. And like, I don't know, after shooting Ireland and after that experience, we all, everyone was like, dude, that was way scarier without like light. And, you know, we do go alone. We do sleep alone. But for the most part, every season we have a flashlight. And so when you watch the raw footage, it's, it's 99% of us doing this just panning left, right, left, right. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we feel safe. And so we wanted to amplify the fear. The goal is to always amplify the fear. So this new road trip, the concept was to embrace the darkness. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean embrace the darkness as in like haunts, like we're not going to go chasing demons this season. Um, we did find some dark haunts. So that does tie into the theme, but it's really more about literal darkness. So this entire road trip we had zero um, flashlights for any time that we were alone. So whether it's a solo, whether it's sleeping alone, whenever you're alone, you don't have a flashlight. Unless you're with the group, you can have a flashlight. So it was really tough. It was really tough. You know, and, and there are challenges there. There are a lot of challenges there. Um, and you not just, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to spoil too much about the episode, but you really do... <laughs> you're really cruel and unusual this first episode uh with <laughs> with the other three um in taking their sight from the minute you you roll up to to crescent to the point where uh it's time to investigate um yeah i mean so there's a lot of there's blindfolds there's darkness there's no flashlights we did bring some new gear out this season too, like mm -hmm. the enhanced recorder where you, you have a headset in with a digital, a live recorder mm -hmm. and it's just blaring at a high intensity. So you hear every noise in the room, um, you know, pair that without being able to see your hearing is just so amplified that any little noise you're terrified. And, um, yeah, I mean, we, it was definitely technically my idea, but in a way it was kind of everyone's cause like we all, we've done darkness experiments. Schrader last season took away our flashlights. And from kind of that moment, it's been like, man, like it's crappy as it is. Like I'm, I was like all of us, we're not comfortable sleeping alone. No one's gotten comfortable yet. Right. But with that flashlight, we've all gotten better at like kind of getting used to it. Like, here we go. But this new season, I mean, it was it took us back to before season one. I mean, we were terrified. You're trying to operate a recorder or a REM pod, and, like, you can't even see it. You have to bring it up to your face, and you hear one noise, and you don't know what direction you can even run or go because you can't see. And it just it brought out a whole bunch of new challenges. So, Alex, let me ask you, um, operating in darkness, um, you, you guys have, have done it once before, before this season. Uh what is your psychological outlook in, in operating in darkness and, and how do you feel about it when, when you're operating in darkness? I mean, you definitely rely on your hearing a lot more than usual. Um, and not only was it sleeping alone that we were operating in the darkness, there's a few times that we had to do solo uh, walkthroughs. We did solos again and once again, no flashlights for those, which makes it incredibly disorienting when you are looking through a two inch monitor on your camera. Um, psychologically though, it, it really weakens you. I think, I, I, I think it does bring out the fear a lot more, which is what we're looking for. Um, cause yeah, I mean, you, you take away any one of your senses, you're, you're already, you know, you're in an uphill battle already. And yeah, the uh, places that we went to this season, did not help that case at all. They were some of the darkest places that we've ever been to ever. So yeah, psychologically it was not a, not a fun thing to deal with. Tanner, I want to ask you this. When, when, uh, what I've investigated, there's actually, um, when you go to Waverly Hills, there's a challenge you can take. Um, I believe it's on the fourth floor. You, you can walk the fourth floor without any light and you, you, 
you, I know it's, 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 it's uh, it, and that's the floor with the, the shadow people. So shadow people come out, walk in front of you. Um, it's, it's hard to do because I mean, there's, there's plenty of room. There's nothing in front of you where you're going to stumble. But what's interesting is as you're walking the floor, your eyes, your pupils actually expand all the way out. And there are little bits of moonlight that come through the, the windows. Okay. So you, there's a little bit of a cheat there. I'll, I'll give you that much. But um, what's interesting is you feel yourself getting more intense. Um, there's, there's a part of you that takes over. Um, so there's a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of fear, but there's also a confidence that comes with it. And let me ask you this, Tanner. Um, do you feel that there's times where you're sitting there where the fear dissipates a little bit? It becomes trepidation, but there is a little bit of confidence that comes in with it. Do you feel waves that come in and out when you're sitting and investigating? I think other people might have that, but me, <laughs> uh, me personally, um, yeah, especially when we're sleeping alone or by ourselves, that's where like my professional scaredy cat comes in. Um, I really like, cause normally when I'm with the group and you know, we're doing stuff in the dark, like, I'm just like, okay, like I have my friends to rely on. Like I have someone to talk to, but when you're by yourself, you're in the dark. I feel like that's where your mind kind of goes racing. It kind of goes all over the place and you start thinking things are happening when they might not be, but then stuff actually starts happening and that kind of starts to freak you out. But I, there is something about like, being in the dark where you can't see everything where, you know, your mind is a little closed off to that and you try to get used to the room that you're in and you try to get more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. But then for me personally, at least like that's where my mind starts racing where I'm just like, okay, well, what about that one lady that's supposed to be haunting this third floor? Like what if she just came around the corner right now? And like, what am I supposed to do here? Like there's a bunch of stuff like that where, I think at least for me personally, my mind goes racing too much where I can't get into that comfort zone when I don't have a flashlight to actually like go like, Oh, it's just a shadow of a door frame. It's not uh, the devil. <laughs> See, that I feel like the confidence comes with after the road trip, right? Like we, you do it all, you're terrified, okay. but then you come home and you're like, Oh, usually I'd walk in the door and have to flick on the light right away. But or turn on my phone light because it's dark, but I'm going to walk right up to my bedroom in the dark now because I don't yeah. care. Like, I, I'm a I big feel that confident. I'm a big one right now. Yeah, I might not even have a nightlight tonight. Who knows? I don't even have a nightlight tonight. I, <laughs> yeah. I, there would be a little more confidence at home, sure, but like here in my studio and down here in my, my basement, I have a ghost in my basement. So, yeah, uh, so I, I, I'm well. kind of used to it. I, I don't, yeah, I don't, uh, but we get along and he... He actually likes watching uh, Vikings and wild games. So it's, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So we get along. Um, there's, there's and the reason I bring up that walk on the fourth floor um, at Waverly is because there's one scene and I won't go too much into it in, in Crescent that involves Chelsea and the tunnels. And you guys are a little shocked about what she does in the tunnels that involves a walk. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to bring the same question up to Chelsea. Now, during that walk, Chelsea, I want to get into your mindset a little bit because the boys are a little, um, a little astounded that you got up and took a walk in the tunnels. I wasn't. I wasn't astounded at all because I, I have taken that walk uh, in the dark at Waverly Hills, and, and quite a few people have done it. Some people can't. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're too scared to, to go forward because they're afraid because there are cells on, on each side of you. They're afraid yeah. something will come out at you. Uh, you swallowed that fear and, and kept going forward, uh, mm -hmm. which I'll give you, and I won't say any more than that, um, because there are some obstacles, of course, I won't say what they are. Um, give me your mindset though, as you go forward. Uh, go ahead. Sure. So, you know, with every decision that you make in life, you're always like weighing pros and cons. Like you're always like, if I do this, then this, if I do that, then that. And, you know, one thing that I really tried to bring to our locations is what would our fans honestly want me to do? 
Mm-hmm. Like seriously, like if, if I sat in the tunnel system all night, like they, I feel like would want me to go explore. Like they really, they would want me to get up, go check it out. Even though personally, that's the last thing that I would want to do mm-hmm. that like has also morphed me into the kind of explorer that I am too, is because I have a new filter now. Like I know the people supporting the show. I bring that filter to these locations and I, they help get me pumped up like to do it. So I would have to say that personally, I would not have wanted to explore by myself. That's totally outside my comfort zone and always will be. Um, But when I think about the people supporting the show on the other side screen, that's what really escalates my, my uh, daredevilness for sure. Funny because like, (laughs) It was terrifying. We dropped everyone, I dropped everyone off at their own spots. And like Chelsea had the, by far the worst one. Like we were all in our own buildings above ground. She's below ground. And then you watch the raw footage and me, Alex and Tanner stay planted in our seats <laughs> for four hours. And Chelsea after like two is like making her way down the tunnel. And like, we all meet up. We're like, what happened? And everyone's like, I just stood there. I couldn't move. And Chelsea's <laughs> like, yeah, I walked the tunnels. We're like, what? Yeah. I didn't even move. There are times where I can't, like, even no matter what kind of, like, wherever I try to go mentally, if I, no matter how much I pump myself up, there are times where I'm stationary too. So there's no judgment there. (laughs) I'll just say too, if we would have known what we knew two days later, it would have made that tunnel a hundred times scarier. Like after the end of Crescent, I think none of us wanted to step foot in the tunnel. Absolutely. I'll I'll tell you this, Chelsea, you tackled it like a champ. That that, that was... (laughs) I, you, you made the, you, you ran circles around these guys. I'll just put it that way. That, that <laughs> was, that was, uh, that was pretty cool. I, I, and, oh, thanks. yeah. And it, it's, uh, it's definitely one of the highlights of the show. That's for sure. Um, especially like, like you say, Dakota, what you find out and um, no spoilers, what you find out in the episode, you, you really go, wow, that, that, uh, yeah, that, that was quite the accomplishment. Um, <laughs> tell us, uh, Tell us a little bit, uh, Dakota, about uh, Crescent and some of the the interesting things. And actually, we'll split this amongst the group. Some of the interesting things we find at Crescent in the uh, in the episode. Yeah. So, I mean, typically when we go to a location, we spend one night there and we get out. And when I discovered Crescent in the research phase, this place is massive. There's 20 buildings. We have access to about 10 of them and a tunnel system that connects everything. And it was a sanatorium and a prison. And those are two of our top favorite places to go as prisons and sanatoriums. And this was both. Um, And when it was a prison, it housed some insanely notorious killers in the country, some terrible people. Um, So it was kind of a surprise for everyone. This isn't giving away anything Mm because I think it's kind of out there, but like we... At the end of night one, when we're leaving and driving away, everyone's assuming we're off to the next state. Here we go. And little do they know, we're turning around because tomorrow night we're doing a second night. So episode two is at Crescent for the second night in a row. And uh, I feel like, yeah, like both nights we kind of like night one was more sanatorium centered and night two was definitely more prison centered. Uh, But both nights definitely involved the tunnel. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And, and that was so cruel and unusual at the end of that first episode, you're like, and we're doing it again. And it was like, oh, <laughs> you son of a, <laughs> you could, you could Dakota's just, super happy about it too. He is. He, it was like a game show host at the end. And you guys, yeah. are, you just see the, any hope on your face just melt. Uh, let me, let me ask, and I'll start with you, Alex. What, what was the reaction when Dakota goes, and guess what guys, uh, what were you feeling at that point? A pit in my stomach. I mean, we've never done anything like that because after the night's over, we all reflect for the next few days before we go into another location of just, holy crap, that was a crazy night. Like, all of that just happened to us. That was one of the scariest things that we've ever experienced. And especially at Crescent, that was one of the, probably one of the scariest nights that we've ever had doing Destination Fear. And to hear Dakota go, and we're going back, now that we know everything that we know, and we've been through everything that we've been through, 
we're going to go and experience that again for a second night. Like that was, <clears throat> that almost could have e- ended the trip right there being like, no, yeah. this is not how we're going to do this. What are we going to stay here the entire time? Like, even after the second night, we were all joking, like, what, are we going back for a third night, Dakota? <laughs> like, <laughs> I probably yeah, will. It was, at some point. yeah, yeah, at some point, I'm sure we will. There's still a couple yeah, of buildings it, you didn't see. I think, yeah, just a pit in the stomach is all it was. I, I really didn't have too much of an emotional reaction. I think I was just plain face, just felt doomed. <laughs> and, Tanner, yeah. Tanner, when when Dakota says, "And guess what? We're going back." What what's your initial reaction? A little bit of the same page. I mean, like, there's times where we have gone to places, like when we went to all five different places in Trail of Terror, and then we go to it on Destination Fear, where we feel like the building is a little used to us, or knows us, or remembers us, and. When we go to this place two nights in a row, we're just like, well, we kind of stirred it up. It definitely remembers us, knows us. Like, what are we getting ourselves into? And, you know, like, we were asking all these questions, trying to, like, reveal some things. And then all of a sudden, you know, maybe we got ourselves a little too close to the fire. Like, we're going to burn ourselves. So it was one of those things where it's just like, oh, man, I can't believe we're doing this again. And then Tanner, when when it's revealed that there's a whole nother section with a whole different slate of ghosts and it's bigger and badder than ever, I don't want to reveal some of the surprises. But what's your initial reaction then? I was like, shouldn't have we known that night one? Like, should we? <laughs> is there a devil or is there a bad guy right here? Like, let's let's kind of tell everybody about all the deep. No. Um, I actually, I actually thought it was good to like, kind of like keep those two separate. Cause like Dakota said, like night one was mostly like administration and, and sanatorium stuff. And then night two was, um, prison. So, you know, if you get a little bit too much information, then you can kind of get a little bit lost. So it was nice to like kind of focus in on those two things. But when you do find out that there's more, like when you think you're going to go in there as the expert, like, Oh, oh well, don't worry. We'll just go down in the tunnels or don't worry. We're just going to go into this room. It's like, no, oh, no, 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 no. There's, there's 15 more buildings we're going to check out. And uh, all of them have to do with prisons now. And you're just like, oh, God. Do you feel like because the way the ep- – and I'm not – I'm trying to do this without giving anything away. But, okay. but do you feel like – if everything would have been unfolded to you at once, you could have gotten some stories crisscrossed. I definitely think that is a possibility for sure. Because it, like when you are in a certain room and, you know, there's a story that's happened it's specifically in that room. Mm-hmm. However, you know, there are tunnels that connect each and every building. Mm-hmm. Like you might accidentally go like, Oh, well that's probably, it could be this because it's going this way. And like, they're not just stuck into one spot, but it is kind of nice to know, like, you know, these are the reports and the happenings that other people have experienced when they've gone into there. And then you can kind of focus in on that. And then again, you don't like, etch that in stone and allow that to be the rule. I mean, you can kind of allow it to be like your own interpretation as well. Um, but I, I personally liked how we did it this time where we unveiled different aspects each night. Dakota, let me ask you this. And, and I know your team is going to hate hearing this. Um, do you feel like you could do almost a six season uh, or a six episode season in Crescent, is it that rich where you could, you yeah. could almost do a season? <laughs> Not going to lie. It was a genuine, like, we had already booked our locations for the road trip. Mm-hmm. And I was really confident with mine. Everyone was happy with theirs. So, like, it's too late after night two to be like, let's just do it all here. But, I mean, I personally was just like, yes, we can spend so much time here. There's still a couple buildings we haven't seen. And I, I also <laughs> believe that, like, night one, if we would have just left – we would have had so many questions. And so night two, it, it, more than ever, it allowed us to face fears and uh, face spirits that we encountered the night before and actually get maybe not necessarily answers, but we got follow-up. We got follow-up experiences that in different buildings that had everything to do with night one. Um, and another quick thing too is like, I know I've seen like, I've heard some people say like, oh, two nights in a row, like that's not that bad. Like we've seen other shows go several days at places and it's like, it's just hard to explain, but like with our method, 
we're showing up at 6 p.m. and the RV picks us up at 7.30, 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. And then we do our little vlogs and then we, we drive away in the RV and like come 10 a.m. when we're like 11, 12, that's kind of when we're done. Yep. So like when I told them this, like we're going back tonight, they had just been up for 24 hours. And now I'm basically telling them, hey, go get five hours of sleep because when the sun starts to go down again, we're going to be here again. So like it was, it, it's, it was intense to start the trip off and just drain everyone's energy like that was, was not probably the brightest idea. I probably should have had a day off. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, today we're going to sleep tomorrow. We're coming back. <laughs> if I didn't do that. How, how does fatigue play in then for the second day of, of, uh, of investigation? Does it, uh, do you feel like it heightens fear? Do you feel like it, it heightens emotion? Do you feel like maybe that's more of a draw for spirits or does it weigh on the investigation more? Mm-hmm. I mean, I personally feel quick answer is it, it, I feel like it helps like it bring out the fear and it kind of lowers your guard. So you're more, you're just less confident, you're less energetic and you just, I feel like you're more exposed. Mm. Uh, Tanner, let me ask you, how did it affect you to have that short turnaround? It's hard. I mean, to be honest, like it's one of those things where you, like Dakota said, we're, we are literally up for 24 hours shooting the overnight i mean with all the things that go into it and then we had maybe like five hours to you know fall asleep then you gotta wake up and try to get something to eat and then go right back into it and you know there's times where you're just like okay all right what are we doing okay like you're just trying to focus and it, it was definitely difficult but again with that being said it did open the door for more things to happen more things to i mean yeah, I really just think like once you're tired, like it makes you not really you're not as sharp, which allows you to get scared more. Stuff mm-hmm. feeds on fear, and then bada bing, bada boom, something yeah. happens. And we actually had an idea based off of all of us had an idea called Alone, where we want to do it one day where we we find a place like Crescent again and all split up on day one into our own buildings and try to last like a week in our own buildings, something like that, where it's like, and Crescent's a perfect location because so many buildings. You know, after having seen these, these two episodes, Crescent seems like, forgive the, the, the term, it seems like the perfect paranormal playground. You've got what, 20 buildings on the site. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe not all of them have paranormal activity, but I mean, it's just this, uh, it's just this cauldron. I think you, I, you might have even made uh, said that term. But it, it's, it's a, a you. I mean, you might have used whirlpool or cauldron or what, whatever it was. It's just it, it's got all of this uh, wretched activity that's happened over over decades and decades. Um, yeah, and it, there's so much that's gone on there that. I got to imagine that there's enough there at least to shoot six episodes and do like a, yeah. a mini series um, just on, on that, that place alone. Um, and I, you know, when, when it was just the two episodes, I went, man, there's gotta be so much left on the table there, but you would almost have to have, like you mentioned, uh, you shoot one day, you take a day off, you shoot another day, you take a day off um, because it, there is, it's, it's gotta be draining. I've got mm-hmm. to, when you when you just watch one of the episodes and what you guys go through, there's mm-hmm. just got to be a day off there. I got to think. Yeah. Well, I mean, even in like the tunnels, as an example, like when you see that scene in episode one, where we're as a group exploring the tunnels, it's like it, it's, some people maybe need like don't really realize like we were down there for several hours, like three or four hours. And these tunnels connect every single building. And a lot of haunted locations have tunnels, but what you don't know is like, Oh, it's, it's closed off at the end or like it's blocked off. Like it's just a long tunnel, but like this, you could, there were so many times where you could either go right or left. All right, let's go right. All right. Now we can go right or left. Let's go left. And I don't know. It's just like that alone walking those tunnels was grueling. That was miles of walking. That's yeah. That's, that's amazing. Let's talk a little bit about the season coming up. Uh, and, and, uh, you're going to, uh, it's, is this, uh, is it eight episodes this, this uh, season? Yep. Eight episodes. And I think one thing we're all excited about is just like four out of the eight are locations like Crescent that are very untapped. Uh, and, a, and a good chunk of them too have never even been explored before. So we really stuck true to like the darkness and being in the dark. And there was a handful of locations that we didn't even know anything. We just knew from locals it was haunted. There's very few stories. 
Um, so we found some new stuff. Interesting. That was kind of dark and then went dark. I was like, that was yeah, so I know. If, <laughs> if, uh, that was my monitor. <laughs> yeah, pe- people at home, Dakota, as he said, were exploring the darkness. His his light went out uh, at yeah at his place, which is very eerie indeed. You guys uh, no don't... No goosebumps. We're good. Yeah, you, uh, you, don't, you don't fail to perform wherever you are, do you, Dakota? <laughs> That was yeah. that was impressive, um, yeah. Uh, uh, just kind of running things down after Creston, you've got uh, uh, Defiance Junior High School, a junior high school, really? Yeah, a junior high school with a lot of death, really, and a really, really upsetting, terror, terrifying story with the janitor too. And it's all true. There's newspaper articles and. Um, um, yeah, probably one of the creepiest uh, things to happen to me while sleeping alone happened at that junior high school. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, yeah. hundred well, percent. Wow. We'll look forward to that. Old historic Harriman hospital is after that. You've got the, the Winchester mystery house. I bet you that one performed for you. Ashmore states, mm-hmm. Ashmore states never fails to, mm-hmm. to, uh, yeah. to, to be a, a mm-hmm. good episode. So I, we got nailed with a massive storm for a majority of the night. And it was that, because Ashmore, we went to in Trail of the Terror, the documentary, and it's yep. the only one out of those five places we haven't actually been back to. And so, yeah, that one performed, and the weather performed. It kind of was like the perfect spooky atmosphere that whole night. That's crazy. We'll look forward to that one as well. Uh, Mid-Orange Correctional Facility is uh, is after that. Uh, you've got the Norwich State Hospital. Uh, wow. Mm-hmm. So you've, you've got it loaded this season, guys. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, Norwich, too, we've all, like Tanner, Alex, Chelsea, when we were growing up and they, looking into abandoned big buildings, Norwich has always been on the list of, like, uh, like bucket list. Like, man, if we could get there one day. And every season I've tried and mm-hmm. never worked out, and they finally, uh, some new management came in and let us in. And um, it, it was the perfect finale. To start at Creston and to end at Norwich Asylum was just, like, the perfect trip in terms of fear. Yep. Look. Totally. Let me ask you guys this. Let's go down the line, and and because uh, I'm curious, there's there's got to be some locations I think off the top of your head that you probably are interested in or or want want to get in. Uh, we'll start with you, Dakota. Where would you like to uh, get into if you had your druthers? Okay, I mean, I could name a lot of his, like Europe or foreign locations. But I'm going to shy away. Um, I really want to go to Eastern State Penitentiary in uh, the U.S. Mm-hmm. The problem we've had is it's just like something there with the way they run it where they don't want people being alone. They want to have like someone with you. Okay. Uh, so that's been a problem with us or like, we can't like our whole show is about being alone. Like we can't have some representative from the, the penitentiary right. by our side when we're not even going to be by each other's side. Uh, so we really want to get there. So if anyone is listening from Eastern state penitentiary, we want to come there. We love the location. Please let us go in alone. Yeah, that doesn't seem unreasonable. I don't. I don't know why that can't be worked out. But we've done it fifty times. We've never ruined the building. I promise you, we will be respectful. There you we'll go. sign a waiver if we die. We die. It's okay. We die. We die. <laughs> we sign those all the time. <laughs> Black mold the spasms. We're fine. Fine. <laughs> uh, Chelsea, do you have a, a favorite spot you'd 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 like to go to? To be honest, I would just love to explore Europe and the castles and just that extra depth of history that we don't get here in the U.S. Um, that would be probably my dream destination. Do you have a, a, a favorite country that, that you'd like to go to? Honestly, yeah. nothing particular. It's okay. just thinking something about Europe. I've actually never been. So we went to Ireland, but we haven't been you know, to the U.K., um, because of COVID. Yeah. And I just think that that would be, you know, selfishly bucket list location, yeah. but also just like you see it all the time and like the haunted magazines and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I just feel like we're totally ready to take that on now. Right on, right on. Uh, Alex, where would you like to go? Or what What? What building, is there a favorite building you, you have or even one or two that you have that you'd like to explore yeah. with the group? Um, so uh, to be a hundred percent honest, we hit my top tier bucket list location, this road trip with Winchester mystery house. Chelsea took us there. Okay. That has been on my top of the bucket list forever, but another one very close would be Alcatraz. Oh yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah. that one. I mean, we did the Alcatraz of Ireland with Spike Island, and I think we got to do Alcatraz of America. I think the so. Alcatraz. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Alcatraz. <laughs> the Alcatraz. I wonder. I wonder if the Park Service would let you be alone there. That's the thing. Uh, getting yeah. getting the Park Service to just let you be would be yeah. the major hurdle. It doesn't work if we can. It's yeah. like we've had that problem yeah. with some locations where it's just like that's 90% of the show is being alone. And like, we can't like, even with the audio guy, like season one, I know some of the production wanted us to have a lot of mics on and have an audio guy with us. And we were adamant, like, no, we'll, we'll, we'll record internal audio from our cameras. Like if there's some guy in there with us, 20 feet away from us, it's just going to make us more confident. Yeah. And we don't want yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You might be, I, I, I would think you'd be able to work the park service before Eastern state. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, you never know. I, I think the park service has probably loosened up a little bit. So you might be able to get Alcatraz. I'm not sure. I, I can't speak for him, but you never know. Yeah. Uh, Tanner, mm-hmm. uh, you, you're uh, last but not least, my friend. Uh, do you have one that uh, sticks out in your mind? Definitely. Uh, I want to go to Bram Castle in Romania. It's Dracula's yes. castle. Yeah. I have always thought that's one of the cooler stories of all time. I think that's just i mean just looking at it it's super cool um so if we ever had the opportunity to go to europe and go to brand's castle i would flip out i'd be scared as hell but i'd be like let's fucking go (laughs) (laughs) absolutely absolutely um so let me ask you guys here in closing uh what do you feel uh from here what what do you feel uh your audience is going to get out of the season what are they going to see? What side of this group are they going to see that they've never seen before? Uh, Dakota. Yeah. I mean, so obviously like the darkness the theme of the darkness, there's a lot more difficulty this season and a lot more challenges for us being in the dark. And then I will say too, just from editing the show and being a part of it, like before the show started, we would all do YouTube videos and stuff. And I'm like, I feel like nothing against the show, but like, throwing ourselves into such a dark topic Mm -hmm. season one and two, we were kind of like entrenched in that darkness a little more. And I feel like season three and especially four, like for the, when editing and watching it, I'm like, man, like everyone's personalities, everyone's individual personalities are just shining. Like they're at an all time high. I think we've all understand the show. Now we understand like what we're doing and we understand too, like we don't always have, like if we're in the RV, like, it's funner to just have fun a little bit when we can and not always be talking about the dark stuff and Mm -hmm. craziness. And so just from a a fan of everyone here, Alex, Chelsea, Tanner, like everyone shined so good this season. And I think, I know we were talking before the show, but like even for me editing the show, when I go back and watch these cuts, like that 42 minutes goes by so fast and it's just like, man, I want more. And like I'm involved in the post-production side. Yeah, you know it, and I and I I paid you the compliment before the show. I'll do it again. Um, I got to tell you, Dakota, the show. And you're right; it goes so fast. It you don't even know that 42 minutes has gone by. Uh, you guys are 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 a fun group to watch. You're 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 right. The personalities shine. Uh, it's and like I said before in the beginning of the show it's sometimes a chore to watch some of these paranormal shows and this is not a chore to watch at all. It's very enjoyable. It's fun. You guys are fun to watch. Uh, it, this isn't a, uh, a group that's been slammed together and you can tell that there's a, a hard dynamic to watch. You guys are fun to watch together. You can tell that you all love each other and it's, it's a, a fun show to watch and there's tension when there's, there's natural tension when you're at a, at a, a a haunted location you can tell you guys support each other um and that you do rib each other that you have fun together uh and it it, it just uh and the production on this show is amazing uh, some of the you guys will see uh in the crescent episodes there's the over the overhead shots are just beautiful of crescent mm-hmm. uh and the production is just amazing too on the show i gotta i gotta tip my hat to you dakota um so yeah, overall, I I love the first two episodes of of this. Season. Yeah, we have a we have a really good team too. I will say, like we for what we're given and what we're what we're making, like our our small group of people doing the production and helping us. It's dark again. Whoa, <laughs> um, 
they're just amazing. And we've, we've been so lucky to have from season one, majority of the people we started with are still with us and they work so hard and it looks so good. And I know how much time they have. They don't have a lot of time to get some of these shots and uh, it's really awesome. Yeah. It first two uh, episodes were really awesome and action packed, lots of stuff in it, lots of good stuff in it. And I encourage you guys to uh, check out uh, the first, uh, not just the first two episodes, but every episode uh, on discovery plus when it hits your uh, streaming service or just check them out on travel channel. If you don't have uh, discovery plus, but by gosh, if you don't have discovery plus by now, I don't know what you're doing with yourself. Um, you gotta, you gotta get discovery plus uh, so you can see every episode as it appears. Uh, Friday, November 25th is when it hits uh, Discovery Plus and Travel Channel. Uh, Crescent Sanatorium is the first location up for the season. Uh, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for thank having you. us. All right. Thank you so much. A lot to be thankful for this week, just a week outside of Thanksgiving. Uh, first of all, I want to be thankful for um, the Destination Faircast for joining me today. Uh, Chelsea, Alex, Tanner, and of course, Dakota for stopping in and spending some time with us. I know they're extremely busy. That brand new season, by the way, uh, coming up November 25th, both on Travel Channel and on Discovery Plus. If you don't have Discovery Plus by now, by God, go out and subscribe to Discovery Plus. Uh, you can find it online or get it in your app stores. Uh, be sure to uh, get Discovery Plus in time for the new season. I uh, want to be uh, thankful, of course, for uh, LaDonna Humphrey and Alicia Lockhart for joining me on Tuesday for True Crime Tuesday. Uh, the book is Strangled. It is available in the link in the description for True Crime Tuesday. Be sure to pick up that book as those two and check out their podcast as well. Deep Dark Secrets Podcast dot com as those two continue their good fight to bring down the death fetish pornography industry. So we wish them luck in their battle as well there. I uh, want to be thankful for Microdose Gummies. Microdose Gummies is available by going to microdose.com. Save 30% off your order and get free shipping by putting in the code DARKNESS for that. We want to take care of you guys as well. Get out of pain, get out of anxiety, get a creative boost. Uh, help with your workout and more, much, much more. Get yourself to a better standard of living. Go to microdose.com to learn more about microdosing THC. Uh, do yourself a favor there and uh, support a sponsor of the show. And last but not least, certainly want to thank you guys and uh, want to thank you, first of all, for entering into the uh, Million Errors Club this week. And uh, by the way, we will announce again on darknessradioshow.com all the winners, not only just the grand prize winner, which, by the way, congratulations to St uh, Stacy Zizek of Ohio, I believe it is, Um and but all the runner up winners uh, in total will announce them all on the Darkness Radio Show website on the blog. Uh, and we will also release all the winners on social media this week or weekend rather and give you the entire scope of uh, everyone who's won prizes. Um, and, to, and thank you to everybody who entered the contest. Uh, just want to let you know from Bruiser and Jess and Mally that we love all you guys, and we want to thank you so much for getting us on track to a million listens in just a short amount of time, four months, under four months, folks, to uh, get to a million listens. And we're on track for another million within another four months. At this rate, uh, we'll average three million listens for one year. Uh, but we like to do more, and you can help us out with that. Just find a friend, find a relative, find somebody somebody you love that's into the paranormal, and tell them, hey, this great show, Darkness Radio, is out there. It makes me laugh. It entertains me. It gives me great information. Uh, those uh, bumbleheads, Tim and Bruce, are on on Wednesday. They bring in Mally and Jess on occasion. And uh, I have a lot of good time with them. I spend a lot of time with them. And I want you to take a listen and then just point them in the right direction. We would appreciate it. We would appreciate it greatly. Uh, of course, you can rate and review us if you enjoy the show as well. Uh, do that either through Apple Podcasts or through your favorite, uh, wherever you rate and review your podcast, we'd appreciate it. 
Uh, so yes, we're very grateful to you guys. We love you guys and appreciate the uh, the feedback that you've been giving us by email. Uh, Tim at darknessradio.com. You can send us an email there or by by rating rating and reviewing. Uh, you guys are absolutely great. We absolutely love you. We appreciate you. I could fawn on you for a half hour more, but I won't. Uh, and I want to remind you to take care of yourself and each other, guys. You know, it got cold this week. It got real cold. Snow was moving in in a lot of the 48 states. Uh, the contiguous states. I'm looking at a forecast for this weekend that's absolutely chilly and and, and snow filled. And uh, you know, I was I was looking at a, a PSA for sharing and caring hands dot org, which is run by Mary Jo Copeland, uh, who I've met personally a couple of times. Uh, she runs her organization without help from the government. Uh, if you want to donate to Mary Jo, there's one example. Go to sharingandcaringhands.org. Help her uh, put food in bellies and coats on people who need coats and blankets and mittens and things to keep people warm. You know, there, there's a lot of organizations, especially in your backyard, that need the help. They just need the help. Uh, and it's it's getting to be that time of year where people are going to start to freeze, not just donating for holiday meals, but donating for survival. People are going to need meals and food and and clothes and outerwear for survival. We're getting to that point in a year now, and um, people are just going to need it. So we really need to think about taking care of each other now in this time where it's getting so tumultuous. So... Uh, make that your mission for this weekend. Uh, take care of somebody out there, uh, maybe even somebody that you don't know, and feel a little good about yourself and do it for your buddies here at Darkness Radio. Got a good week in store next week. We hope you join us as well next week for Beer City Bruiser, for Jessica Freeberg, for Mally Fox. I'm Tim Dennis. We love you so much and hope you'll be back here next week for the best in paranormal programming. This is Darkness Radio. <laughs>